Hello and welcome to this video on upsizing a vintage apron pattern. I'm Catherine from Crystal Pegasus Costumes. This project is part of a sewing challenge to make a garment using the rationing restrictions of the 1940s. I'll include more details in the description box, including a link to the playlist for the challenge. To make my apron, I used the Mrs. Depew vintage sewing pattern, 1940s ladies ruffled apron with pockets. What drew me to this pattern was that it had a prettily shaped waistband and that the upper and lower pieces were gathered into it. This suits my curvy shape more than something flat. This is a single size pattern with a stated bust measurement of 32 to 34 inches. As such, I had to upsize the pattern to fit me. In the spirit of the sewing challenge, I omitted the ruffles, going for a relatively more streamlined shape. It also turned out quite hobbity and easy to wear. So without further ado, let's get to it. I started by assembling and cutting out the pattern pieces. From the left to the right, we have the shoulder straps, which I plan to lengthen to make a crossover, saving a closure in the spirit of the challenge. What they call the waist, and is sometimes known as the bib, which I shall call the bodice. The waistband, the ties, and the larger pieces are the skirt of the apron. The bodice and waistband are the two pieces that we are going to focus on and alter to fit. I measured my bust to be 46 inches, larger than the 32 to 34 listed in the pattern. But the apron doesn't go all the way around, it only covers the front. So the bodice should be up to 20 inches wide if it were sitting here. Currently, half the bodice is 6 inches wide. I also noted that the shoulder straps will need extending as it sits quite high currently. Playing around, I decided adding 4 inches was a bit too much and so to add 3 inches of width to the bodice, taking it to 9 inches each side or a total of 18. I measured my waist to be at 36 inches. Assuming a gap at the back of 2 inches, that means I want the apron waistband to be 34 inches, half of which is 17. As the waistband piece was 14 inches long to begin with, I decided to add 3 inches to it. Looking at the shape, I wanted to add the length at the back, keeping the shape at the front and bringing the bodice piece in again, I decided to add one inch to the length of the body of the bodice and to the strap. Back to the pattern board. Having decided on my changes, I implemented them with a slash and spread method. I drew my lines, cut along them and added in the desired extra space. To make that space permanent, I turned the pieces over and taped on extra paper. I drew on the new edges of the pattern piece, then cut it out. I repeated the process on the bodice pattern piece. I had misplaced my French curve at the time, so the seam and seam allowance were sketched freehand. Extra tape was applied, and then the pattern piece was cut out and so ready to use. I used a printed cotton 
as my main fabric. I laid out my pattern pieces and cut out the fabric, leaving extra length on the various straps. I put in gathering stitches along the top edge of the bodice piece and I quickly pleated the bottom of the bodice which I pinned to the waistband using the same pins that originally held the pleats. I hemmed the ties and straps, which are single layer, by turning over the edge twice and top stitching. I put on the apron for the next fitting and I pinned the waistband to my clothing. I pulled the gathering threads until I was happy with how it was sitting across the top. I adjusted and pinned on the straps, crossed over at the back. Then pinned the shoulder seam as I wanted it. I also made a note that the waist seam needed attention. I stitched on the straps at the shoulder as I had pinned And so at this stage, this is what the top of the apron looked like. I also cut a waistband and a bodice out of linen for the lining layer. To line up the bodice layers, I firstly pinned down the bodice main fabric, right sides up. Laid the lining over the top, gathered the lining top edge to match, then pinned the layers together. I adjusted the pins at the shoulder seam to fold down the end of the lining. And stitch the lining to the outer fabric along one side, right sides together. Then I did the same on the other side of the apron. And then around the neckline. I carefully clipped the corners as far as I could as well as the seam allowances. Then I turned the bodice inside out or rather right sides out after pressing I top stitched along the neckline and down the sides. Bringing us to this point here. I stitched gathering lines along the bottom of the bodice through both layers. I pulled the stitches to gather the material and pinned one side of the bodice to the waistband. Then I stitched the first half of the bodice to the waistband and repeated for the other side. I pinned on the waistband lining and stitched it on, following along just in the seam allowance of my previous line of stitching. I had a quick try on to check I was happy and pinned the straps into place. 
I adjusted the straps at the back so they were ready to sew. After stitching on the straps, I pinned the waistband to the lining where it wasn't yet attached. Then I stitched along the rest of the top of the waistband. It was looking more and more like an apron. I wanted to ensure everything within was sitting flat. So I pinned it and top stitched it along the upper edge of the waistband. It was starting to look quite cute. Time for the apron skirt. The pattern calls for the apron front, cut on the fold, and the apron back, of which we're meant to cut two. In total, it's asking for a width of about 64 inches. But in the spirit of the challenge, I'm going to simplify it down to one piece of my fabric, which is 54 and a half inches wide. And as the selvage is nice and neat, I'm not even going to hem the sides. I did need to hem the bottom, which I did by folding it up by 5 cm, then under by 2 cm, leaving a 3 cm hem, which I top stitched. I gathered the top edge, and pinned the gathered skirt to the cotton fabric of the waistband keeping the lining out of the way, and stitched. Then I pressed and pinned down the lining layer of the waistband, adding in the ties at the ends, and top stitched to secure. At which point the apron was structurally assembled My final task was to add two patch pockets. I started with rectangles and then I pressed the seams under. You can see the outside on the left, the lower and the upper pieces, and the inside on the right. Note that the top is folded to the outside as it will be covered by the upper piece. I stitched the upper pieces to the lower pieces. Here's the view from the front and the back. I pinned the pockets to the apron, pattern matching as best I could. And then I stitched the pockets on. With that, the apron was complete. And there we are. I'm very happy with my new apron. It's cute, comfortable, and covers just the right amount of my skirt. Also, the pockets are very handy. It's a great addition to my Hobbit wardrobe. And now I'm ready for any 1940s cooking adventures that may come my way in the future. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope you'll join me again next time. Goodbye.